Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode it's time to sort out the suspension on the Ferrari Tesla Rossa at race shocks because uh, we've improved the handling on this by moving the weight distribution around and putting a bit more weight on the front but as you can see that's had a little bit of an impact on this and this big gap here not much gap at the front which we knew was going to happen and uh, we had to we knew we were going to put new suspension on it to adjust that but we're at uh, race shocks to put a track active suspension system on which is a really trick setup more on that later let's get into it now we've kept it wales and we've come down to Llanetli to race shocks and this is simon the main man and uh, simon before we get into putting the suspension on the ferrari give us a little bit of a background as race shocks who are you and what are you all about uh, race shock started from my own interest in, in caterums and uh, sprint and hill climb. Uh, we started the business in 2010, uh, really looking at caterums, and since then it has evolved into, you name it, every sort of car. Right around the world we have customers in New Zealand, America, Dubai, you name it. They come to us particularly for specialist lightweight cars. Now, we should state from the start, Simon does race these things. So he does stand behind and test the very things that he puts on the cars. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're known for being a bit quick. Likewise, the other guys, they all compete. And yeah, we, we test everything. And we, yeah, we, we do things a little bit differently. Yeah. Now, he is quick because we watched him go up uh, Loughton Park, I think it was, the hill climb. So yeah, I can attest to him being quick. Right, so... Suspension-wise, we need to have a little bit of a chat, I think, about exactly what suspension we're going to be putting on the Ferrari, because it's not your standard setup. No, certainly so not. So you got the setup on the bench you can tell Absolutely, us? we can okay. show you. Cool, let's have a look. Now, we've got some awesome eye candy on the bench here now, but I think it would be pertinent to just explain to the viewers, Simon, what the basics of a spring and shock suspension unit is all about. Now, treat it as if I'm an, a, an idiot, which... Tim will, uh, yeah, Tim, <laughs> Tim will say, yeah, I knew that was going. So I'm an idiot. I don't even know how a spring and damper works. Explain. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try. Uh, a spring keeps the car off the floor, keeps the car suspended in midair, shall we say. Yep. And the damper then damps the spring. If we didn't have a damper, the spring would bounce like Zebedee forever be like driving on a, a trampoline absolutely yeah. we may have seen in the old days a, a car going down the road with a wheel bouncing yeah that's because the damper had failed yeah so then the damper you can treat as a timing device gotcha. it controls how fast the spring will squash under various loads and how fast it will release so together you might turn them as a shock absorber but they are separate things gotcha so, the, uh, and the ideal setup is to make sure that the tyre is always continuously in contact with the road to get the power down and obviously performance when you're cornering. That's right. Because a, a tyre in the air is doing nothing. Doing nothing, no grip, either forward, sideways. And we would set up the car with different spring forces, yep. depending on whether it's a rally car, a road car, a Formula One car. Yep. They all have different requirements and so we give different spring rates and different damping. and it depends also on the weight of the car absolutely as well. yeah, okay cool so it's all about controlling Contro the the tire and the uh, wheel as you go in over the bumps yes in relation to the chassis right. and that that's i think it's understanding the difference between chassis and wheel and sometimes it's easier to actually think about the wheel Okay, so there we go. That's the basics of a spring and damper and what it does. But Simon managed to uh, talk me uh, into the benefits of a semi-active suspension system. And that's what we're going to be putting on the Ferrari. So I see this setup on the bench here now. I think the next thing is, let's talk about semi-active suspension. Right, now we've got two setups on the bench here now two dampers and springs but we're going to be just talking about the dampers so we don't need the springs do we we don't need them now take them out of the way so right so we've got the original ferrari damper here which is i, I suppose you just call it a standard damper yes yep. and the way that i understand these work is you have a piston 
inside the tube. Yes. And as it goes up and down with the seal there, oil passes either side through, is it this top one? Yep, through all the ports. Little holes here. That's right. And as the oil passes through, that's essentially what's damping the thing down. Correct. Yep, absolutely. Yay. Any Got prizes it right. for this, Tim? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, so that's the standard damper, that's and that's what we damper. were going to put on the Ferrari, which is just a, a proper, um, uh, you know, sized, if you like, uh, or specced spring and shock setup for the um, improved weight distribution that we had on there. And believe yes. me, I've been driving it around as it is, and it's already a lot better handling-wise. Now we've got a bit more weight on the front. So that's what I was going to do. And then I had a chat with you, I think at Lowton Park, yes. and you told me, t told me all about semi-active suspension, and I was completely sold on it. But for the viewers out there, time to shine, Simon. <laughs> Tell us what uh, semi-active suspension all I is all about and what the benefits are. Okay, so semi-active suspension compared to traditional suspension, very, very similar. We've got a different piston size here at the moment, but so ignore that. As you quite rightly said, we have the piston, and we have these things called shims so this placed is the on the piston. At the, at the top, Correct. Yeah? Yeah. And a different thickness of the shim, a different diameter of the shim on either side will control the speed at which the oil can pass. Right. Now, normally, we would have a little adjuster on the bottom that we click, and we change a needle inside which allows oil to bypass the shims. Gotcha. The more oil we allow to bypass the shim, the faster it will move through the oil. Gotcha, okay. Now we can delete with the semi-active system the manual adjuster. And you can obviously only do that when the car is static. That's right, and unless you want to run around outside with a little screwdriver. Not with my driving. <laughs> so now we move on to this little important bit, which is a very, very fast solenoid valve. Okay. Basically, much like electric motor in there. Oh, yeah. I it's know all what magnets. A solenoid is. It's all magnets and electric fields. Yeah. And now we can vary the imaginary needle with an electric current. Yeah. But this valve is working really super fast. It right. can go from full closed to fully open in six milliseconds. Wow. And okay. it's doing that continuously. Yeah, so that's, that's the beauty of electric motors, boys and girls, is it can react super, super quickly. So it is literally like somebody running alongside the car as you're driving, adjusting this valve for all the G-forces, the acceleration forces that the car will be receiving. Now, so, we have a controller for that. Yeah. So that sends the signal. In layman's terms, then, when you are going into a corner and you're putting all of the forces on the outside you know, suspension... Yes. This system, or the, the computer, the... Yes. Do you call it? A controller. Yeah, controller. It's, it's a controller. So the controller will sense that Absolutely. those forces and what they'll like stiffen up. It'll make it up stiffen the... up the compression side, but only the compression side of the valve. It can react so fast that if it needed to rebound quickly, it can change. So it's kind of preventing a little bit the uh, body roll. Yeah. So do you even need anti-roll bars? No. Ah. Or at least very, very thin ones. You right. don't need them. It's active anti-roll active anti-dive or pitch, yeah. and as well as active damping. So that's on track. I can definitely see the benefits of it on track. But on roads, especially the roads coming over Brecon Beacons, and lovely roads they are, but sometimes they're like a racetrack flat, yes. and sometimes it's like you're doing a rally stage. Yes. And this setup, essentially, you don't need to change at all. It just no. automatically detects Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We, we can change the settings by a switch in the car, which we'll set up. So you can have a different set. You can have your racetrack setup, which will be super stiff yeah. and prevent even more roll. Or we can switch it to a comfort mode or fast road mode. It'll still have active anti-roll and active suspension, but you can change it to what you want it to be. Brilliant. So if you're going out for a Sunday lunch and you want to keep yeah. people happy in the car yeah. and not surprise them, yeah. we're in for we got the same on the... Uh, motor control system so you can have s three modes like sport eco and track or something like yeah. that uh, so we can do the same with absolutely suspension. so the the aim of the game is with the test is to build the ultimate test yes. and if we've got all that power yes. with the tesla motor in believe me i'll take it out for a spin later there's a lot of power we've got to have the ultimate suspension system yeah. which is why i went for the track active semi-active suspension system yeah. so i think time to put it on 
absolutely. Get a, get Let's get it dirty. fitted. Yeah, yeah, we'll get the guys on it now and we'll get it fitted. Cool. I can't wait to drive this because we drove it down here and I want to drive it back and see what the diff difference is. I've got sweat on Tim, I don't know about you mate. It's tiring work this, isn't it? Chocolate hobnobs. Su supervisor. King of biscuits. Now, while the guys are just doing a bit of work and before we take these off, I just want to show you something that's on the Ferrari. Um, it's on the 308 as well, I think. It's a du dual uh, coilover setup on the back of the test rosser and what we're going to do is we're going to put a semi-active uh, setup on one of them and a standard on the other so uh, yeah every all three on the side if you like one side all three uh, coilovers are, are different you've got one standard coilover one with a remote cylinder and one with a integral cylinder and we'll uh, show you that in a bit now the guys have got it uh, a little bit further on, I can show you what I mean by the, the fact that there's three different dampers. So this one is the front one, so there's a remote cylinder on that, a uh, remote reservoir, sorry. And on the back, we've got uh, an integral reservoir there, and then this is the, uh, the, the standard sort of like coil over here. So three different styles and types of uh, coil overs going on. So there is the uh, right rear original Testarossa coilovers off. They weigh uh, quite a bit. And here, oh, there's a lot of difference in weight. Are oh, they lighter? Oh, a lot lighter. Yeah, you feel them. Look, really nice setup going on. And uh, one question I got for Simon when he's not too busy, because he's taking the other set of belt. This spring is a lot smaller and thinner than this spring. So I've got a question from him in a minute. I want to know how can this cope uh, when this one's so big? All right, sorry, I've got a quick question for you. So this is the original. Yes. Yeah, I'm talking springs now. Why is this spring thick and this one thin? Are they the same spring rating or what? Uh, they are going to be very close. These are actually going to be stronger. They're stronger. They're the stronger. thinner ones are stronger. Yes. Explain that, how that works. That it's doesn't the, work in my head. It's the quality of the wire, the specification mm. of the wire that's made to wind the actual spring. And what uh, springs are these? So these are hypercoil springs. Hypercoil. Hypercoil. Hyperco. It's, uh, it's all a bit of branding, but we call them hypercoil springs and they're made by Hyperco. Right. Um, they're American and they, they, they're found on many, many of the top race cars around the world. It's the only spring in, in the world that's got a lifetime warranty. Note for us there, Tim, we need these on the race car, right? <laughs> Top race cars of the world have these on, therefore, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. our race car. All the new uh, electric hybrid Le Mans cars. The, there you go. They've all... Now you're talking about hybrids. These. That's right. <laughs> oh, that, okay, that explains it. I'm going to put this one down because it's so heavy. The other thing that was confusing is now, if I put this one up, this is the spring off the front. Yes. Right? And look at the length of this compared to that. What's going on there then? That's, so because this is a softer spring, it needs to have more stored energy to reach the ride height that we want. This spring is stronger and needs less stored energy to reach. So you squish this up more with That's preload right. when you put it on? Yes. And this one doesn't need it? Doesn't need it. It should need some, but not enough. Gotcha. Go on, you're holding something in your hand. I know you want to talk about well, that. What's that there then? Well, this is just something for people to, to choose. You might want to run a little question with feedback on, on the show about what rate that spring what is. What rating it is. Okay, everybody out there, comments below. What rating do you think this little spring is here? What, what, what car is it off? Uh, this will be off an Indy car or any Formula car where it fits actually just over the shaft and not over the body of the, the damper. And that's the, there's no other coil, that, that is the only one they have on the uh, suspension? Yes. Isn't, wow. Okay, so comments below, what poundage, we're going to go with poundage, what poundage do you think this little spring is in here? Right, that's the front's done. Oh, God, that's the original. 
<laughs> I don't quit. And that is the new one. That is light as a feather. It's unbelievable the weight difference. Right, the rears are on. So we've got our standard coil over here and then the semi-active one over here. And uh, you can notice also we've got some extended um, strapped top towers, I'd probably call them, because we needed to get the tops of the shocks a little bit higher than standard to be able to get the travel that we needed on the shock. So, uh, yeah, a little bit like on a Land Rover front, you've got those big towers to hold the tops of the shocks. We've done a little bit the same here that's extended them by, ooh, what's that, about an inch, maybe two. So the rears are on, uh, fronts won't be long now, and then we can, uh, I think, connect it all up to the uh, control system, and we'll show you that next. Right, front's on now, so uh, I don't know if you can see there, I'll try and hold the torch up, but the uh, front is on there, and then if you can see, there's a remote reservoir on this one, so that's routed all the way down in here, and obviously there's going to be another panel then that goes over that. But yeah, I think we're nearly there. Right, the shocks are all on, uh, wheels are on, and the guys are just getting into the stage now of setting the ride height. So they've dropped it onto the stands, uh, onto the, onto the um, scales, but we haven't corner weighted it yet. They just dropped it on just to see where the ride height on the front is, and they're just adjusting the spring perches now to get a little bit higher on the front. And then now uh, we'll go on to the next stage. So one of the problems we had when the car came in, obviously, is that it's too low on the front. And if uh, you can see here, and compared to the rear there, Tim, do you want to quickly go to the rear and then come back? So what the guys are doing now is they're going to preload the front springs just to get a little bit more height on the front before they do anything else. So the, the system's on now then, yeah? It's powered up now. So that's all the shock absorbers connected to the computer control system? Correct. Right. Yep, and, and, all, and the computer has been told that it needs to run in its firmest settings. Okay. Now bear in mind that it's not receiving any acceleration forces at the moment. Yeah. So we've set a window of, of operation. Yeah. And at the moment, it's sitting in the bottom of its operation, but at its hardest setting, gotcha. if that sort of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see now that the car is really quite oh, stiff. It's yeah. hardly moving. Yeah. Just so if we then. set it to full soft, then you'll be able to see how much it moves when it's in full soft. Go on. Do, uh, Tim, zoom in uh, on that while he uh, does this. So that's uh, full stiff, yeah? And we'll change it to f soft now. Right, so you've just gone inside, touched the, the button on that screen, yep. and now... And now we're in full soft. soft. Yeah, so if you watch this now then... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a definite difference. <laughs> right, so uh, brave old Simon here is going to come out for a little test drive with me. He's looking a bit nervous. Um, because we're going to set up now the... Uh, how many modes? Uh, five modes five, let's call and it. lots of permutations. Oh, let's call it three. We're going to set up three modes. Um, I don't know, soft, medium and hard, yeah. like that. And uh, there's a little touchscreen display down here he's going to be playing around with. And I'm going to drive it and see what we think. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to actually uh, see the difference now. So uh, we'll see you in a bit. So if I go around and round about, but it's still, no matter what the settings are, it's still, it's still got a semi-active yep, like, uh, reaction to it, yes, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So, right. this, this feels perfect for a road setter. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I'm already liking it. I mean, I can feel the difference from the original shocks and, and we're instantly. Only, and we're only on a smooth road. Yeah. Let's see if we can find some bumps and potholes or manhole covers and stuff. I'm sure I can find some of those roads. But and once you, can, you get sporty, you can change the mode on the I fly. You don't need to mode. stop. No, me. I don't. So we can go down there and apply. And now we're in full soft. Straight away, I can feel it. Yeah, it's instant, isn't it? Yeah. God, it's flat now. <laughs> There's no body roll. No. And we're only oh, half, that's shocking. halfway th halfway through the settings. That's shocking. How much? of a difference this is already. 
Oh, so flat. There. Oh, save that setting. Is uh, that setting uh, yeah, safe? Yeah, I can, I can save it. I, I know what that, it that, is. That's it's, it's my go-to middle of the road well, setting. Oh, that's my go-to setting already. Just leave that one in there. So I'm happy with that as um, yeah. pass road. Yeah. Oh, wow, is the best way I can describe that, mate. Right? Absolutely insane how much of a difference there is between the original setup and how it is now. So I'll take that as an improvement then. Oh, huge, mate, huge. All right, I've got a massive smile on my face because we now have a suspension setup on this car that matches the performance of the Tesla motor. I mean, it's shocking how good this setup was. And I was expecting it to be good, just not this good. And I think what, what um, really impressed me the most is the anti-roll and anti-pitch aspect of it. Because, you know, you can, you can select instantly whether or not you want it in soft mode, medium, hard mode, etc. But in each of those modes, like uh, when we set it in hard mode for like track mode, you know, it was still quite stiff, but not really stiff. And you set it in the complete opposite, in soft mode, and you go around the corner and you're thinking, oh, it's going to be a bit wallowy around the corners. Oh, no. Instantly, as soon as it feels G-force on that outside like wheel, it stiffens that wheel up. So it, you go around the corner like you're on rails and really flat, even in soft mode. But in the sport, what did I call it? Like sport casual. Smart casual. Smart casual mode, which was like, yeah, uh, a sport road mode, if you like. I was mindful when I was coming up to a pothole, like, oh, pothole, it's going to just go bang. But oh no, it, it reacted within milliseconds and just, whoop, I can deal with that, and off you go. Whereas if it wasn't semi active, that would just go bang and big cringe moment. But really impressed with this system. And big thanks to the guys at Race Shocks for helping us out with this setup. And any Ferrari Testarossa owners out there, you want the ultimate suspension system. This is what you need. Give Ray Shocks a ring and get the tractive suspension system because I am mightily impressed by it. And they've saved all their settings um, so they can just supply it off the shelf. Now, we've given them the corner weights of the original car when it was petrol, so they've got all the spring rates sorted for that. So, yeah, massive thanks to the Ray Shocks guys. And Tim's looking at me now because he's going, Come on, we need to go. No, I'm just looking forward to the drive. Exactly. Home. You want to get in this and go for a spin because, you know, we got two hours of daylight left and some fantastic roads to go home. So yeah, next time you see us, hopefully we'll be on a track with us just to really push the limits. And on that note, I've hoped you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.